Welcome to the channel. You saw the title and thumbnail, so you know what we're building. Let's go ahead and get right into it. I started the build by laying out all my eight quarter maple boards to pick out the best sections to use for the tabletop since that's the most important. And then I could use all the small offcuts for the bench base since that would be being painted and any of the knots or imperfections could be filled. For the table base I'm using poplar to cut down on some weight and cost as well. I almost didn't video this because well it's a pretty common design but I figured since I got an order for one and I don't personally have any table videos on the channel I figured I'd go ahead and show my process and offer plans if you like this size and method of construction. I know I'm saying this right as I'm flattening and squaring up the boards on some not cheap machines but building these farmhouse tables really is a pretty easy beginner project. My first two projects that really got me hooked on woodworking were tables similar to this and believe me contrary to the most common negative YouTube comment my shop didn't look anything like this back then and I still got it done with limited and inexpensive tools. If you ever have any questions on another way to do something, just drop me a comment down below and I'd be glad to help. Anyways, after the initial milling process getting all the pieces flat and square, I could begin all the glue ups for the bases, which was a lot. I don't have a good source for larger material near me, so the only way to get this beefier look is to just glue boards together to get the size I'm after. To conserve my clamps, I grouped as many pieces as I could at a time. As riveting as watching me smear glue on some wood is, we'll go ahead and fast forward to taking them out of clamps. But not so fast if you thought you were completely done watching me glue wood together. Next I went ahead and glued up the bench top as well as all the boards of the tabletop into groups of two to make the final glue up way less stressful. To aid in alignment and keeping the pieces flat I'm using half inch dowels. I normally use biscuits for this but I was nearing the end of my stockpile and didn't have enough that were actually the right size. A lot were either too thick or way too loose and essentially would do nothing in keeping the pieces aligned. These have all been in my shop for a long time and exposed to the same moisture content, so this is just a serious lack of quality control here. No doubt this was way slower than using biscuits, but honestly, I've never had panel glue ups turn out more perfect than these did. And when I say these turned out perfect, I mean they were absolutely perfectly flush. I left all the base pieces oversized to start, and now I could go ahead and run them back through the milling process to square them up and plan them down to their final size. If you have any questions on exactly what these machines are doing here, I have a more in-depth video going over the process on my channel if you want to check it out. With everything cut to final size, I could start laying out all the joinery, which is just a mix of half inch dowels and screws. After making my marks, I like to use an awl to make an indentation, and then when I use a brad point drill bit, the tip basically falls right onto my mark and ends up perfect. The plans lay out exactly where to drill all these holes for dowels, but of course you could use any other joinery method you would like.
Now that all the pieces were ready to put together, I first eased most of the edges with an eighth inch round of a bit and then got everything sanded since there were areas I wouldn't be able to get to once it was together. Then it was just a matter of adding the glue, dowels, and screws. Since Clue has a time limit, I always like to think through the process to make sure I have everything I need planned out. This is an example of an oversight. I'm using 4 inch screws so to prevent from having to use like 6 or 7 inch screws, I countersunk the holes quite a bit. But I had to shut off the camera and go into scramble mode to find a long enough bit to actually drive the screws in all the way. But once that crisis was averted, I could finish the assembly. Here's a design element worth pointing out. You can see that the center post is smaller by a quarter inch on both sides when compared to the top and bottom pieces. And then these angled braces are reduced by another quarter inch on each side from the center post. This creates kind of a stepped look design element, but also saves from having to make sure all the joints are perfectly flush. Another benefit to this on a painted piece is that the wood is going to move and possibly crack the finish at these joints over time. By having the setbacks that create nice shadow lines anyway, it's far less noticeable than if these pieces were all the same size with flush joints. The last detail to finish up was the two feet just made out of some 3 quarter inch material that I added a chamfer detail to on the top edge, and these were just attached with glue and screws. For the second assembly, I just went ahead and hit the easy button to magically duplicate the first. When doing the dry fit, adding the stretchers to join the two assemblies, I found it to be a royal pain. So for the actual glue up, I moved down to the floor where I could work with gravity to my advantage. By the time I added the length of the dowel sticking out, my longest bar clamps were just barely too short to work. So a good option is to just use some ratchet straps to pull the pieces together and clamp to dry. You can see I added some double up cardboard tape to protect the legs and prevent the straps from digging in and marring up the edges. With the pieces held together to dry, I went ahead and got all those screw holes on the angled pieces filled with glue and 3 8 inch dowels. On a stained or natural wood piece, this is a good opportunity to use a different species of wood as an accent, or use a plug cutter so the holes have the same face grain as the other pieces. But in this case, I'm just looking to make these holes disappear after primer and paint. With the table base done, I moved on to the bench, which again is just simple but very strong half inch dowel joinery. Next I went ahead and got all those groups of two boards glued together to make up the final tabletop, which is a full 4 foot wide by 6 feet long. And being solid maple this is one heavy and durable table to say the least. 
Also worth noting that the grain orientation on every board is opposite from one to the next and this will help ensure the top stays flat over time. Now back to the bench to add in the angled details. And again, no need to complicate things, these are just glued and screwed on with the holes filled afterwards. If you haven't seen this trick, using a straw to remove the glue squeeze out works really great. It will form to fit any angle and the glue just goes inside the straw versus pushing it out and spreading it everywhere. Here I'm adding some threaded inserts to use felt padded leveling feet on both the bench and table base. I'm building these on my flat workbench but the client's floor may not be perfect. Or it may be and these might not be needed but always a cheap and easy addition to make sure your table doesn't rock back and forth in the client's home. Also on something like the bench that will get pulled in and out the felt will keep it from scratching a wood floor for example. The last thing before starting the finishing process was cutting the slots for the Z-Clip tabletop fasteners I'd be using. Another option besides a biscuit joiner is using a slot cutter router bit or running these pieces through the table saw to make a groove way back before assembly. But here you can see how they just slide within the groove to allow the tabletop to expand and contract with humidity changes throughout the seasons. To start the finishing process, I'm first using Sherwin-Williams Kim Aqua Surfacer since I had some on hand, and my Graco 9.5 HVLB. Something like this can be pretty tricky to spray with all the tight inside corners, but being able to really fine tune the sprayer and just applying light coats, you'll see at the end I'm able to achieve a really beautiful finish. I did two coats with the bases upside down and then another two coats with the bases flipped over to help be able to hit all the spots at different angles. For the top coat I'm trying out this m -Tech product which is a water based pigmented lacquer that I was able to get custom tinted to match the trim work in the client's house. I was really happy with how well it sprayed and sanded between coats, I of course just can't speak on the durability of it yet. But again I sprayed 4 coats, 2 on each from the top and bottom, sanding with 320 grit between coats. With the bases done I could finish up the top, first by trimming the ends down to final size and then rounding over the edges on top and bottom. I won't bore you with video of me sanding, but I actually only sanded the top up to 180 grit. Maple can be a little finicky trying to stain, so I had some test pieces and I found at 180 grit I didn't have any swirl marks to worry about and the stain soaked in it looked a lot better versus sanding to up to 220 grit for example. And to help control some of the blotching that can happen with maple, I first applied the oil based Minwax pre-stain conditioner. For the stain, I'm using this alcohol-based wiping stain from Sherwin-Williams. Again, the exact stain to match other millwork in the client's house. This is a great example of what's so awesome about making custom pieces. It's a brand new house and this table is literally made to fit and match perfectly. Definitely something you can't do ordering a table off Wayfair. For the top coat, I used my go-to General Finishes Enduro Clear Poly in Satin. Sanding between coats with 320 grit, I was happy with the finish and called it a wrap after 4 coats on both the top and bottom. <music> Lastly, I reinstalled the leveling feet and got the tops attached with those Z-clips I showed earlier and this thing was done. Like I mentioned, the full step-by-step -step building plans will be linked down below as well as all the tools and products you saw throughout the video. Hopefully you enjoyed the process, I'd appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. Oh, and be sure to turn on the notifications so you're alerted next time I post. Until then, take care.